The Cleveland Browns will travel south to face the Cincinnati Bengals for the final time in the 2023 regular season. Your Locked On Browns pregame show starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, and I appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. If you are not part of the everyday crowd by now, well, make a new plan, stand, subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel, and the show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We are closing in on the regular season finale. As we all know, your Cleveland Browns have clinched the number five seed and will be traveling next weekend to face whoever finds a way to finally win the AFC South. But we will close out the regular season Sunday, 1 o'clock in Cincinnati versus the Bengals. Um, some late news here for the Browns in the day. Um, Anthony Walker does go on to IR. There had been uh, obviously a talk earlier in the day that Sam Kamara was bringing elevated up from the practice squad. Um, now this will still give the Browns two moves that they can make um, by tomorrow. One of them will be Riley Patterson, obviously uh, with Walker going to IR. That is how Sam Kamara gets to the roster, still leaving the Browns with two openings. For Anthony Walker, obviously has not been a part of this team for the last three weeks with the knee injury and the subsequent surgery. Um, Sione Takitaki and Jeremiah Uskormo have been playing out of their minds the last couple of weeks. So obviously tough for Anthony Walker, certainly a vocal leader, a, you know, coach on the field. You hate to use it, but that is definitely something that Anthony Walker can be described as. Um, but Tak. And, of course, JOK have been phenomenal as of late. It's a loss. It's not a great loss. And I know I see some things on social media. Oh, no, another injury. This is not an injury. Unfortunately, Anthony Walker has been banged up a lot here in his time with the Browns. Has certainly been effective. Has certainly been a solid, solid part of this team in the locker room. But Anthony Walker maybe can come back if there's a Super Bowl run. Perhaps, um, but similar to some other guys who tried to battle back from knee injuries and knee surgeries, um, Anthony Walker, unfortunately for now, will be shelved. The rest of your Cleveland Browns injury report going into, and you know, coach has given us you know some insight here. Um, Miles Garrett was not around today. Um, no reason was given. If you do remember, Miles uh, suffered a loss in his family earlier in the week, so maybe Miles was attending to those services. Um, you know, either way, they said he was sore, but, you know, I think we all knew Miles Garrett was not going to play this week. No word given on Joel Batonio, who did return to practice today. This is basically straight uh, based on guys who are injured as to whether or not they are in. So just so everybody knows, uh, Barakwes is questionable. Um, Coach Stefanski says there is a contingency plan if they think he is not ready to go on Sunday. My guess is Riley Patterson. Or you're just going to go for it on every single fourth down you have. I'm not really sure, but there is a contingency plan in place. Omari Cooper will be out this week. Um, that's fine with me. Um, uh, you know, coming off that monster day in Houston, you know, some rest, a little banged up heel. Let's see Omari about as close as 100% as we can in the se in the playoffs, keeping in mind it, how banged up. Look, it was a heel. It was a concussion. It was ribs. It was scar tissue early in the season. Uh, Amari Cooper is a guy who can really benefit from this rest right now for this team. Mike Ford has played a lot of corner, has played a lot of special teams for this year. Uh, this team this year. He will be out as well. Dustin Hopkins, as we all know, is out. Greg Newsom, the knee, although Greg on social media said the knee's doing okay. Greg Newsom will not play this week. Juan Thornhill, you know, I don't know if this is a step back or just saying, you know what, we're not going to let you play anyway. So Juan Thornhill out as well. We know about Anthony Walker, Jordan Kunashik questionable. Again, just a lost, lost season for Jordan Kunashik. Now, two real interesting points here from the Browns today. 
Elijah Moore has practiced all week. Um, and as of the reco- this time of this recording, it has not been definitive that he is out of the protocol. Um, and Elijah Moore is listed as questionable for Sunday. I, me personally, I'm not putting him out there in any way whatsoever. Um, who knows what the thought process is there from Coach Stefanski. Now, the other one, and this one just seems, I don't know, just seems crazy. Um, Agbaniya Ankaranko, as we all know, you know, since obviously the Jacksonville game, you know, tear of the peck. And, you know, he's been trying to do everything he can and says, you know, look, I'm trying to be there. I want to be able to close out the season. I want to play in the meaningful games and playoff games with my teammates. There is a chance that Agbo Okoronko is going to play on Sunday. Me personally, I would have just held him out um, until the playoffs. And maybe because the Okoronko news came out before the Anthony Walker news. So maybe they were just sitting there trying to patchwork through getting, you know, 48 guys to play on Sunday. Um, So by doing so, you know, but maybe the Kamara coming up changes things. Uh, I'm not totally positive on that front. Um, you know, Alex Wright is going to play. You know, Isaiah McGuire is going to play. We know most likely Sam Kamara is going to play. We know Miles isn't. Um, that leaves Zadarius, and that certainly leaves Okoronko. So that leaves you with five defensive ends. You would ideally like to have four. Um, you know, you could bring up Isaiah Thomas, who hasn't played the entire season. Not sure that's going to happen. Um, you know, but are you going to put Agbo out there? You know, you know, I, I think the thought process of trying to play Agbo is, you know, what is he capable of? So when we go into the playoff game, we know what we can at least do with him. I don't know if the injury he has can be made any worse. Uh, I do worry about whether or not, you know, the compensation factor could lead to another injury by putting him out there this Sunday. Um, maybe you don't want to play Zadarius Smith. We'll see the way it all works out, um, but that one does seem to me just a tad bit confusing that Agbanaya Ankaranko would be a guy who is going to uh, possibly be in contention to play in this game on Sunday. From the Cincinnati Bengals side of things, T. Higgins is listed as doubtful with a hamstring. I don't think T. Higgins is going to play. I think T. Higgins would be foolish to play. Um, He is going to go into the offseason as one of the absolute top wide receivers on the free agent market. Um, he will be in a financial bracket that the Cincinnati Bengals will not be able to touch him. Um, I would love to see T Higgins go as far away from the AFC North as possible. Um, Actually, let's even look at the NFC schedules. Let's see. uh, Browns played this year. They played the NFC West. Let him go to the NFC West. That way we don't have to see him again for three seasons. Um, But T Higgins listed as doubtful, most likely not going to play on Sunday. Cornerbacks, uh, Chidobi Uzier, cornerback Jalen Davis, both listed as questionable. It is a shoulder and a calf for Uzier. It is a groin for Jalen Davis. So the Bengals secondary could be dinged up as well as the Jets, uh, Jets, as Jeff Dripkel, as we're going to nickname him. Hopefully, we'll give a great showing on Sunday. We're going to give him a little thoughts here on Driscoll, what the possibility is for him and what he can maybe bring to this team on Sunday. Your latest Locked On Browns continues. Don't go anywhere. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitor. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire, but certainly need to hit on said hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, it's quick, and it is easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That is linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns.
And I appreciate each and every one of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen each and every day. If you were not part of the everyday crowd by now, don't be coy, Roy. Subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. And you are in. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Can't believe we are sitting here week 18, final pregame show of the regular season. Of course, we will be full throttle next week as we go into the AFC playoffs. Cleveland Browns, your number five seed wildcard team, will be traveling to the winner of the AFC South. Nothing goes faster than the NFL season. It's amazing. It is mind-boggling how fast it goes. From the end of July, here we are already to the big, uh, basically week 18 and the end of the NFL regular season. Nuts, just absolutely nuts. Now, as it looks here, we know Jeff Driscoll will be the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns on Sunday. Um, Browns made the decision early, and unlike some weeks this year, Jeff Driscoll has actually had a full week to prepare for this moment on Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals. The former Bengal himself obviously knows the place well, um, should know some of the personnel, but obviously not a lot from Jeff Driscoll's time over there with the Bengals. For this point, this is kind of what we know what he's playing with. He is playing with Cedric Tillman. He is playing with David Bell. He is playing, we'll see, on Marquise Goodwin. He is playing with James Prochet. Uh, now, we do not know if there is going to be any more changes as far as receivers brought up. You know, like I said, the Browns still have two moves they can possibly make from the practice squad. On that practice squad is Jalen Darlin. On that practice squad is Austin Watkins. If they think Elijah Moore is not going to go, and maybe we don't know where they are with Goodwin either. So that would leave the Browns with only three possible wide receivers. And as we know, James Prochet also works as your punt returner. So it wouldn't stun me if there is a wide receiver elevation from the practice squad. Um, you know, because okay, I, I just can't put Elijah Moore out there me personally, but we will see a way, way that works out. You know, now for Jeff, obviously, you know, been in the league for a long time, former Florida Gator, former Louisiana Tech. Jeff Driscoll actually holds a degree from both of those schools. So you kind of get the idea and, you know, the work ethic of a young guy, of a guy like Jeff Driscoll. Um, you know, this opportunity means a world to him. And look, for so many guys that are going to suit up on Sunday, this is special. It truly is. You don't, you know, you don't get this opportunity very often if you're these guys. You know, they're not the regulars. They are no guarantee. There's no guarantees for a lot of guys who are going to play on Sunday for the Browns for extended playing time. Uh, you know, Michael Dunn's going to be, most likely be a starter. Um, Nick Harris is probably going to have a big time role on Sunday. Um, some guys on defense are going to get elevated playing time for these guys. And you know, it sounds kind of corny, but this is their Super Bowl. You know, you bust your butt. You are just as hard as the star players on this team from the time you walk into training camp, practice all season long. You are just as hard as star players, but it's not like anywhere else. It's not like a rec league when you were a kid. Nobody's guaranteed playing time. Um, so these guys are going to get time on the field. Most of them should be pretty fresh and looking to, you know, make a name for themselves and, you know, be a part of this crazy fun and hopefully historic 2023 season for the Cleveland Browns. Jeff Driscoll looking to become the fifth Cleveland Browns quarterback to start a game this year, possibly win a game this year for this team. Um, and again, you're working with limited numbers, but that doesn't mean a guy like Jeff Driscoll and Cedric Tillman can't hook up. It doesn't mean David Bell. And look, we talked about it. The Bengals secondary might be banged up as well. It doesn't mean David Bell isn't capable of making a pl couple of plays. James Brochet, same type of thing. If Goodwin's out there, obviously a crazy, crazy good vertical threat against a Cincinnati Bengals team that has serious issues with their safeties. And who called that all offseason? This guy, two thumbs, this guy. Um, and it was one of the Achilles heels, obviously, of the Cincinnati Bengals this year. Um, and look, losing Joe Burrow was obviously catastrophe uh, written all over it for this team. And as the weeks in the past couple of weeks, losing DJ Reader, this franchise lost their best quarterback, best player at the offensive position quarterback, Joe Burrow. They lost their best defensive player in DJ Reader. This way, I think. There is going to be a chance Cleveland Browns should be able to run the ball this week, probably run the ball with some pretty good success, which would be great because the Browns, you know, had such a slump with their running game, were able to pick it up last week against the New York Jets. If they can string together a second positive week here Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals, A, it's going to make Jeff Driscoll's life a little bit easier. B, maybe the Browns can start believing and having some more faith in their running game again. 
something they might need at some point in a playoff run. Granted, wherever it looks like they're going to play for their first destination destination in the playoffs, two of those games, one would, you know, would be in a dome, either Indianapolis or Houston, Jacksonville. No weather, most likely in any of those scenarios for the Browns, but you don't know what week two, week three, possibly the playoffs could bring you as well. Now, something you could look for. Now, look, you got a big opportunity here if you're Coach Stefanski. You get to go into this game and have some fun with it. It's, you know, this is a gravy game. At the end of the day, the Browns are either going to be 11 and 6 or they're going to be 12 and 5. And none of it's going to mean a hell of age. This team knows exactly what their destination is. This team, they cannot finish any higher, cannot finish any lower. So you get to go in a game like this, and this is house money. Now, if there's a trick play or two that the Cleveland Browns have been hiding up their sleeve for 17 weeks, why not now? Can Jerome Ford throw a football? Can you know who can throw a football? You know who threw really, really well the few times he was called upon it while he was in college? Pierre Strong. Don't believe me? Look up his collegiate passing stats. Pierre Strong was a dude throwing the ball uh, at South Dakota State. Reverses. Obviously, there are so many things you can do. You can get in your bag here. And look, this is what's fun. You know, and you get an opportunity like this in a game that you're playing out the string that doesn't matter for the Browns. You can have a lot of fun with it. You know, you can make a so, you know, put an onus effort on making sure Cedric Tillman gets that first career touchdown. You know, make an effort on making sure a guy like James Prochet, who's worked so hard as a punt returner for you this year, gets involved in the passing game. Um, Driscoll, you know, you, you want to see, I think you're going to see a lot of screen game. Um, you know, it's the kiss theory. You know, you keep it simple, stupid. Um, I think you would probably soon see a decent amount of rollout action from Jeff, Jeff Driscoll. Um, if the running game is going to work, I don't think the Browns are going to force Jeff Driscoll into throwing, you know, more passes than, you know, they would need to. It's not like they're, they're you know, it's not like Jeff's here and he's being groomed for anything. You know, it, it just worked out. Um, of course, we still don't know if there's actually a competition here where Jeff Driscoll could be competing to be the number two quarterback behind Joe Flacco in the playoffs with P.J. Walker. I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there isn't. But Jeff Driscoll is here. You're going to let him play. You're going to have him a little fun. You know, and again, you, you can do what you want with this. You know, if you want to run it 50 times, run it 50 times. You want to throw it 50 times, throw it 50 times. There's no script here. Um, whoever they're going to be playing in the playoffs, nobody's going to be firing up the tape of the Jeff Driscoll-led Cleveland Browns and saying, oh, well, there's a tendency that we're going to be able to use in the playoff game, and that's going to be a uh, path to victory for us. No, this is – it's either going to be very vanilla. It's going to be a lot of fun, like I said, with trick plays. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of Pierre Strong. Um, you know, Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt. I think Kareem is one guy that I probably would really, really limit his touches this week just because he plays with such a physical style. Kareem leaves himself open for a lot of bumps and bruises. Is this a winnable game for the Browns on Sunday? We're going to talk about that a little bit here as we close out Week 18 pregame show on Lockdown Browns. I appreciate everybody for the support. Up until this point, and next week, man, business is about to pick up. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, so many of us get obsessed with how to change ourselves, and that may be a really difficult thing to do if you're struggling. We should just expand on what we're already doing right, which allows us to go about our lives more confidently. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really, really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You can get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you have made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We close it out. Your week 18 pregame show. Cleveland Browns travel to Cincinnati. One o'clock start. Bengals playing out the string. 
is to say that the last couple of years and all the abuse we took from Cincinnati Bagel fans, and I'm sure a lot of them have jumped off to the bandwagon and going to root for the other, oh wait, other pro sports teams in Cincinnati. Probably not. Um, comes down to, you know, is this a winnable game for the Browns? Does it matter? All, all really, really good questions. But, you know, like I said, this team has a boatload of momentum right now. And there are guys who have been along for this ride who, you know, bystanders, rubberneckers, watching it all go down. And now they get their chance to go out there on Sunday and, you know, put up a couple stats. So when the final story is told of the 2023 Cleveland Browns, they can scroll through one day with their grandkids and say, hey, look, I had two tackles, I had two tackles and a half a sack. So a lot of guys going to get the field on Sunday. Obviously, you know, the rookies, McGuire, Ika, Cedric Tillman, maybe could be your wide receiver one on Sunday for this franchise. Um, and it's it, you worked hard and you succeeded and you overcome, overcame adversity to get yourself to this point. That's a special, special thing for this franchise. How many times in the past have we seen the Cleveland Browns back up against the wall? standing on the train track, so to speak, and everything just go wrong for this franchise is not the way it has been this season. You know, do the Browns need to win on Sunday? No. Do a lot of guys who are going to play in this game on Sunday basically want to be able to win this game, go back to the locker room, go back to the ride home and sit there and tell Miles Garrett how they were responsible for a big win week 18. And I'm going to tell you right now, this won't hurt this team going further if they don't win, but this will absolutely help this team if they win this game on Sunday. When you're going to see Miles Garrett, Joe Flacco waving some towels, cheering on guys, and that's the thing with a team like this. It, 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 everything, and you saw it with the Joe Flacco video that the Browns put out today, You know him cheering for everybody, him screaming at the scoreboard, watching Ronnie Hickman take a pick six to the house. All these guys understand and respect, and certainly a guy like Joe Flacco, because Joe Flacco was a star in this league and then was just a general backup. Now he's a number one quarterback again. So if anybody understands what some of these other guys on this team – are going through and getting the opportunity in their Super Bowl here this year. It's certainly a guy like Joe Flacco. Um, you, you, you know, you, you just want to continue to stay the course and, you know, just keep the emotions going. You know, they know this game necessarily doesn't mean a hill of beans, but everything you can take it from it, if they do win and look, the Bengals, it's really hard to say that Cincinnati's going to come out here looking for blood. You have to, you know, Browning, you know, Joe Mixon, Chase. I mean, there's nothing for, you know, Mixon and Chase to play for here. You know, Jamar Chase has had a fantastic season for this team. Joe Mixon has continued to play well at the running back position for this Bengals team. <clears throat> And, you know, the pass rushers will see the way it works out and who's going to be in, who's going to be out for them. Um, and do they start pulling some guys early to, you know, avoid, you know, off season, you know, a possibility of an injury and, you know, an off season marred by rehab because no NFL player wants to go through that. No professional athlete wants to go through that. When you get your free time, you want your free time and you want to work out and you want to hone your craft at your own schedule. You don't want to be up at 6 a.m. getting physical therapy getting massages, getting your workouts, you know, as you can on a hobbled knee, shoulder, whatever it may be. So I really have no idea what Cincinnati Bengals are going to bring. I have a pretty good idea that the crowd is going to be loud Cleveland wise on Sunday. I think this is going to be for a lot of Browns fans. This is going to be viewed as, you know, a little bit of an extra home game. Uh, I'm not sure Bengals fans, what the actual draw is for them to go. Right now for Cleveland Browns fans, if you told us the game was in Anchorage, Alaska, I think you would find a nice outpouring of Cleveland Browns fans to show up. They are doing anything they can right now to get their fellow of the Cleveland Browns, and rightfully so. I um, guess we got to give you a prediction, right? We've done it most of the year, right? I think Cleveland Browns are going to win this game, and I think the Browns are going to win this game pretty easily. Not even going to lie to you. I think the Cincinnati Bengals have nothing to play for. I think it's going to show. I think the fact that you say Jamar Chase is good to go. I think Jamar Chase 
is going to be one of the first guys to go if this starts. If this doesn't go well, I think Jamar Chase will be one of the first guys to kind of maybe step out, let the other guys play. I think the Browns are going to come in fired up. I think with the amount of talent that the Browns are going to have watching from the sidelines, rooting on their friends, their teammates, the guys they truly care about. I think the Browns are going to come out and give a really, really good showing on Sunday. I think Jeff Dreskel, we're going to talk for over 200 yards. I think Pierre Strong is going to give you over a 100 yard total day. I think Cedric Tillman is going to get his first NFL touchdown. And I think the Cleveland Browns are going to win this game 29 13. Cleveland Browns are going to win by double digits to close out the regular season in Cincinnati on Sunday. Book it. You heard it here first. I am Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate each and every one of you who made Lock on Browns your first listen every single day and throughout this 18 weeks of the regular season. It's been a magical ride. I have enjoyed every second of it. The the feedback from you guys, the amount of people that are here every day, I mean, it's a lot, man. And, you know, when times go as well as it has for this team this season, it's really, really, you know, been special for me. There's been a lot that's gone on with my life. You know, I had it moved, all that stuff, you know, everything good. But for a lot of change in my life to have this change, Cleveland Browns wise, and do this coverage here, it's just been absolutely amazing. If you are not part of the uh, the everyday crowd, just subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel, guys. Make your lives that much easier. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns. <laughs>